I'm here today to announce that the program known as DACA that was effectuated under the Obama administration is being rescinded. The DACA program was implemented in 2012 and essentially provided a legal status for recipients for a renewable two-year term worker authorization. My name is Jay Shiva Boyna, and I'm a mechanical engineering student at the University of Utah, and I'm also a documented. So my family, are all from Colombia. The life in Colombia is not one that I remember very vividly. I remember the concrete floors, worn down buildings, my mom telling me about getting harassed, seeing like dead people, that was a common thing. The benefits that we receive from being documented to not have to fear deportation. So for the period that our DACA is approved for, we don't have to worry about getting deported. And the second thing that it gives us is a work permit. With that, we're of course able to find jobs, but it also gives us a social security number, and that's pretty important because it's an identity to us. But beyond that, we don't have much benefits. DACA has a pretty strict vetting process. Our records had to be clean. We had to be pursuing an education, be over a certain age, under a certain age, here by an exact date, to allow us even the opportunity to not be deported and to work here. Any person that receives a benefit that's a dreamer comes from that same pool of people. For whatever reason, a lot of people think that we get free education, and we definitely don't. It's very difficult for us to pay for our education because we are not eligible for financial aid, and a lot of um, scholarships require the permanent resident or U.S. citizens. So even student loans, we're not eligible for. Anything that's backed up federally, we don't get any kind of welfare. It's not something that we can apply for. Because we have DACA, there's this stereotype that surrounds us that now we're able to do anything. The truth is it's not. I can't travel. As a mechanical engineer, even if I'm qualified to work, I'm unable to because of citizenship. There was a moment where I felt like I was not welcome here. In high school, I, I took a psychology class. The teacher always told me, you care to learn and, and you're the reason that I come. So I always thought he's really fond of me. There was another immigration hot topic and it came up in class because there was a student in that class that had family that was undocumented. And he said, gosh, it's so stupid that they're trying to do this to people that are undocumented. And the teacher said, well, it, it is what it is. We shouldn't have them here. And I remember thinking, I wonder if he would think that if he knew that I was undocumented. I wish that I could say that I was brave enough to have said something to him, but I didn't. One of the things that we as DREAMers were always most afraid of is um, if I say anything, what's going to happen to my parents? You know, that was one of the greatest fears that surrounded DACA when it first came out, is if I give you all of my information and if I tell you that I'm here illegally because my parents brought me, what are you going to do to my parents? And so I don't think it's so much more about coming out for us now that we have DACA, as it is that at the moment that we do it, we come out for our parents too. And our parents who gave everything to protect us or the last person that we want to harm. You know, my motivation is always my family and the family that we left behind. And the truth is there's no motivation like the one that you have when you know everything it took to get to this country and everything our parents gave. My parents are very smart. They came here to work in jobs like waitressing, cleaning, and babysitting, you know, jobs that you do if you're like a high school student. But they set aside any career that they could have had for us. And they humbled themselves here and sometimes even had to be humiliated here. And they just took it for us. You know, and so I always think of that. And every time I fail a class, every time I do bad on a test, I think, how can I fail? How can I fail after everything they've done for me? You know, it's unacceptable. And that's a heavy weight to carry, it really is. I know that a lot of people don't understand why we came. They look at our parents and they think, the situation that your child is in is because you decided to bring them illegally. You know, if your child has any struggle, it's because of a choice that you made as a parent. And that just angers me because my parents are only to blame for my success. Nothing else, there's nothing else that I would ever blame my parents for other than my success. If I fail any of my failures, those are my fault, but any of my successes are my parents' fault. That's all I would ever credit to them. Imagine seeing your newborn baby girl, you know, imagine holding her for the first time, imagine looking at her and realizing we're not in a safe place. She's not going to have the opportunity for an education. The chances of her getting assaulted, the chances of her getting hurt, or not being enough food for her sometimes. 
Imagine feeling that. And then ask yourself if you wouldn't do everything that you can to get out of that situation. To give a better life for that baby that you're holding in your hand. And I think when we look at it that way, we can begin to understand why our parents made the decision that they made. Because it wasn't easy. And I'm blessed. You know, I came on a travel visa and the Lord really guarded our way here. And But it wasn't that easy for some people. You know, some people cross the border. And the border is treacherous. The border is murder. The border is rape. Then you come here and you face discrimination and our parents faced humiliation and, and to this day we're facing it. To this day we see it now, you know, the people that don't want us here. Imagine how terrible our opportunities were in our home countries that we decided that all of this was worth it. That even now I would tell you it's still worth it. I still prefer this even though I don't feel wanted. Even though it's so hard to move forward, I prefer this than to be in my home country because here things are possible and that's all I really need. That's all our parents needed. We knew that um, Trump was going to make this announcement about DACA and we had already prepared ourselves for that news but it never felt so undervalued. You know he talked about us but he didn't talk to us. In that moment that I realized what's going to happen to us and that speech was in the interest of the American people and the American people and the American people. And there was this part of me that was like, you mean me, right? Like I am American, that, that's my identity, that's who I am. If I'm to go back to Colombia, I'm not Colombian, you know? I'm, I'm gonna stand out like a tourist because that's what I'll be. My home is here. DACA isn't a complete solution for us, it's really not. But what I really want is an opportunity to be a citizen in the country that I've already grown up in, that I'm already a part of. If I could encourage other dreamers, I would tell them that we've made it this far, that we're here with a purpose. As dreamers, we're almost like our own people, because the character that you build when you grow up the way that we grow up, when you grow up with the burden of, I have to be the best that I can be because of everything my parents gave for me, when, when every day your motivation is, how can I help? and repay my parents. How can I make this trip worth it? How can I become the best me that I can be? When you grow up with that mindset, it's so, so different than other people that are our age. We're special in that way. And I really do think that that character is gonna see us through. In the same way that I have met people and I have found grace before them, saying, hey, I'm undocumented, and I've made those people change their mind, about what being undocumented really means, about the people that immigration policies are really affected. We're going almost one by one. Every person that we meet that hears our story is more often than not a story of that person becoming an ally of a dreamer because they see us and they know us. And it's because we have this hardworking character, we have this love for other people, this love for the community, this love for service that's harvested because of the way that we had to grow up. And I think that makes us special. And I think that if we keep moving forward, people are going to keep seeing that. And I know it may not seem like we have a lot of support right now, but we do. And the more that we get out there, the more support that we're going to have because they're gonna see what you and I are really about. But I will say that I've given my best here. You know, I've given for this country, I've given for my community, as if it was just that, my community. And all we're asking is to be a part of it, is to have a say in it. And eventually when we're all heard, I think things will change. I think there's hope for us. I think, I think the Lord is with us. Early.